Hey there, Kazen here, and welcome back to Always Doing. Today I have part one of my May wrap up. Yes, I read enough books to have a part one. This is good news. Um, first, some life updates. As you can see, I have new glasses. This is very, very new. I actually picked these up just a few hours ago. I am not used to them. And my old glasses is actually the pair that I brought with me to Japan when I came here something like 12 years ago. So the prescription was way out of date and I have grown very used to them on my face. Actually, the pair I had before that, only for two years, but that pair too was exactly the same and my husband has only ever seen me in those glasses. So this is an adjustment for me for everyone and something that complicates it a bit is that my face is rather narrow and in Japan there's not a lot of people with narrow faces which means that I am relegated to children's frames and trying to find children's frames that you can pull off as professional is very hard a lot of them have lots of like pink or like bows over here at the temples and it's not a good look so I ended up going to Costco because they have import everything. I found these. It's not... If I were in America, this wouldn't be my first choice, but I am making do. We'll see. I'm still on the lookout for a very me pair of frames. I haven't had lenses this large since I was in fourth grade, so this is just a big adjustment for me. We'll see what's gonna be weird editing this video seeing myself like this, like staring at my face like this for the first time. In other news, rainy season is starting early all over Japan. There are sections of Western Japan that have started three weeks early and Tokyo looks like it's headed for the same fate. And this sucks because we were supposed to have three more weeks of spring, basically. And now we have gray skies, humidity is starting to creep in and it looks like a super long rainy season. Normally it runs like the second week of June, to mid-July and now we're looking at mid-May till God knows when and after that the skies turn blue yes but it's also all of the summer heat and humidity so it's not exactly a relief when it's over either this before part was the best part so I'm filming today in artificial light because this is the time I have because my husband he had to go to work he couldn't like log in remotely and they couldn't make it he has to like physically go it's, it's a mess so it's been a day but I'm going to try and gather and like funnel this energy into a great wrap-up. I have four books. There's a book two prize book. There's poetry, has been a while, as well as some romance, which is where we're going to start. First is Cinnamon Roll by Anazabo. I went kind of in depth into this in my Cinnamon Roll characters video, which I will link down below. That was a recent video about all kinds of cinnamon rolls, which are characters that are a bit too good for this world. In this book, that is Max. He is a, I mean, from the outside, you can say he looks like a cinnamon roll character because he loves to bake and to cook for his partner. And he's on the like beer league hockey team. He's a faculty at a university and they all get together and play for fun. And like an all around super nice guy. Turns out he's actually, actually, he's also a sadist and a dominant sexually, so BDSM. And he ends up getting together with Tom, who is a submissive that has been looking for dominant but has only been finding assholes. And he's like, oh, maybe this is the only person who's out there for me. And he's not thrilled by the idea, but he and Max get together and Max is like, you know what? I'm going to show you what a good dominant is like so you, so you know what's out there. And they end up falling in love. Zabo is one of my favorite romance authors, especially their Twisted Wishes series, which is about a queer rock band. That is amazing, especially book three Reverb, but it's worth it to read the whole series so you can feel that payoff. I mean, the found family, everything. And this book I love for many of the same reasons. They said that while they were writing this, it was pandemic and they just decided to throw everything they love into it. And it shows because there's there is the baking and there is the hockey. Uh, they're a big Pittsburgh Penguins fan. Um, and there's also the the sex and all these other things that you can tell they love. And it makes it feel warm and wonderful. And it proves that you can have a sadist who is a cinnamon roll, that those are not mutually exclusive. I loved watching these two come together, watching their relationship develop every single sex scene. And there's a bunch of them. And I will have content uh, notes linked down below because there's a lot going on in this book, but every sex scene has meaning and furthers the relationship and helps them realize things about themselves and each other. Tom is wondering if maybe he's aromantic. He might be demi-romantic. He's not sure. He's working his way through that and all of this other stuff. It was a joyous, wonderful read that I... It was right book at right time and that's pretty much every Zaba book. It's always a good time for a Zaba book 
for me. This is part of a larger series called Bold Brew. This was book number nine, I believe, but every single one is designed to stand alone. They're all by different authors, actually, and they loosely relate. I think this book had some cameo appearances of somebody who appeared in the last book, like that kind of thing, but that's a, it's, fair, it's really self-contained. I didn't feel like I was losing anything reading just this one. And yes, very enjoyable, just what I needed. If you want to know more, do check out that cinnamon roll video because I get a bit more in depth there. After that, I wanted some off-the-wall science fiction romance, and Grace Goodwin is an author that I actually half swore off after reading one of her previous books. I'll see if I can find the wrap-up where I talk about that book down below, because that book, while it appears to be subversive, I mean, there's a triad, it's a woman and two men, and it's off in space and all this off-the-wall stuff, it weirdly underpins traditional Christian values. While it's doing that, it was odd and it was just weird and I, I was like okay no more good for me but then I read the jacket copy for the first Starfighter and I knew I just had to read it to see how it would turn out because it sounds amazing because there's an alien race out there that is losing a war against very bad empire type people and they need more starfighters they need more pilots for their spaceships and so what they do is they design a video game it's actually their training program that they use in their own world and so they make that a video game sell it on earth it does gangbusters and it's very difficult and this woman our heroine is the first one to actually complete the game and when she does um there's her like partner in the game it's kind of like co-pilot and uh, it was somebody that she was able to build using features like, you know, what kind of eyes, what kind of uh, face, what kind of all those things. And that person is like, will you come and will you be my partner forever as we fight the thing? And of course you click yes. And then, and she's like, okay, that was a great game. <laughs> Excellent. Let's see what comes next. And then that, the next day, uh, that dude, that actual guy that was in the game ends up showing up at her doorstep and saying, hi, I'm here. We are off to go save the universe from the evil people. And she's like, wait, what? So this is where she learns that it wasn't just a game and she ends up going off with him to a different part of the universe to fight the bad guys and fall in love along the way. And there was the premise is the strongest part of this. There were a lot of other bits that either bothered me or that I had outright problems with. First of all, as I was reading, I didn't realize that there's an 80s movie of basically the same name with basically the same premise and it started like once I knew that it felt kind of like a ripoff if she had given credit somewhere or changed the name a little bit more I would have been easier to forgive and so this, that's just kind of weird and I feel like she was trying in parts to be more inclusive which is great but she kept missing like when the players like configure their partner for this game, they get choice. They can choose either male, female, or androgynous. And I'm like, okay, well, first of all, why are you choosing sex and not gender or just leaving that blank and have people choose collections of features and let that be whatever gender it ends up being? And even so, male, female, androgynous, that's not the whole spectrum out there. That doesn't, <laughs> that's not it, that's not it. So I could see that she was trying to be more inclusive, but she kept missing. The action was slapdash. It wasn't very satisfying. They are banging at weird times in weird places on the station because that's like the only time. It's just, and like there's insta-lovey aspects to it. The consent is not quite there, which bothered me. Like, for example, when he comes, he's like, please come back to this world with me. And it's very clearly said that he needs her consent before he can take her. So she basically goes, okay, I guess. And all of a sudden he had basically drugged her and drags her off and like, wait, wait, she consented to go, but she didn't consent to how, and she didn't consent to being marked in this way. And she didn't like, there was all this other stuff that was, again, trying and missing. I almost DNF'd, but I decided to stick it through so I could give a full review here. And uh, yeah, once again, I'm kind of writing off Grace Goodwin because even though the premise itself is awesome, the story and the writing, which wasn't very good either, like nothing else held that up, unfortunately. So after that, I was looking for a quick win, something I could finish quickly, easily, and I saw Kara over at Wild Book Writing, I'll link her down below, talking about Light for the World to See by Kwame Alexander. This is poetry, 
and the audiobook is grand total 15 minutes or so so I turned it on while I was cooking and I ended up listening to the poems I think twice and I say poems because it starts off with an introduction where he talks a little bit about his life and some of the first protests that he went to and what that meant to him and that was super interesting liked that and then it goes into the three poems and the production of these is so good they are backed by original music and especially the first poem I was instantly taken like okay this has to be listened to on audiobook because this experience is singular within itself and that first poem I absolutely loved um, it turns out that the book itself like the print book is also highly designed and it's not just words on a page there's lots of graphic elements to it as well so I'm, I don't want to say that you know audiobook is the way to go I think both of them are going to be very different and interesting and well produced well put together experiences loved that first poem it hit me right in the gut really good the second poem and the third poem didn't grab me quite as well unfortunately nothing I can put my finger on in particular but it just didn't have the same power or the same punch or the same whatever they were good but it didn't hold up to the same level as that first poem so I ended up giving this I forgot we have three or three and a half stars because the intro and the first poem were excellent and the second and third were just, and it, it was so short I was even surprised because I mean 15 minutes I was halfway not even halfway through making dinner so I ended up going back and listening again but yeah so um glad I read it but um yeah you'll have to try it and see if the poems hit you different they might and the last book I finished was a book two prize book. If you are not aware of the prize, I will leave all kinds of links down below. I'm judging nonfiction. So this is a nonfiction book. And this is a book that has a lot of hype and I see why it was good. The way it was put together and coming at the subject from different angles was fascinating and interesting. However, I mean, it didn't, it was good. It was good. It wasn't above and beyond for me. It wasn't like it was hard to read. I was able to get through it just fine. It wasn't like I didn't learn anything. I learned a bunch, but I had some nitpicky stuff that I can't get into here because it would give away what it is that bugged me and not big bugged me, but just a little bugged me. And I think that with a little bit more work, it might have been even better. So, and also the selection of what was talked about, I would have liked to see widen out a little bit. And again, I know this makes no sense because you don't know what book I'm talking about, but that's another reason why you should check out my book two prize vlog when it comes out, which will be right at the end of the month after the results are announced. I hit the publish button pretty much as soon as I can after that. So look forward to that to help clear up all of this vagueness that you have now. So those are the books that I finished in the beginning of May, as well as some life updates. And if you'd like to talk about any of it, the books, the life, whatever, how you doing? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.